Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and joining me today is Chris Dobbin. He is Director, President, and CEO at Nova Leap Health Corp. It's a publicly traded company. The symbol is NLH on the TSX Venture. And Nova Leap will be presenting at our upcoming in-person investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase, Vancouver, September 6th and 7th, 2023. For more information to register to see Chris's presentation, to potentially meet with him one-on-one, please go to planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Chris, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Good. Thanks very much for having me. Always great to catch up. Oh, same here. It's been a minute. So I'm, I'm glad uh, we're going to get a, a full update here today. Um, but for those that may have missed any of our interviews that we've done in the past or any presentations you've done in the past, can you give our audience a quick overview of the company and then we'll go from there? Yeah, we're an in-home care company. Uh, we operate in Canada and the U.S. So in-home care is probably the best example I can give you would be if mom or dad has dementia and they need assistance within a home, we provide it. Very good. All right. So last time we did an interview together, we published that on January 18, 2023. Companies put out a bit of news in the first half of 2023. So uh, let's go through some of that news, some of the highlights from it. Uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, look, I mean, we just uh, published our Q2 results last week. Um, some of the best results in our history. Uh, we, had a, we had a great quarter. Um, you know, revenue was up. Gross margin was up, gross margin percentage. We had record operating results in a U.S. operating segment. Uh, we had record consolidated adjusted EBITDA. So, um, you know, if you sort of go back a few quarters, all the stuff that I've been talking about in terms of making some of the leadership changes we've made, um, you know, focus on some of the operational improvements within, particularly in the U.S. I mean, we we really saw that come to light. Um, and and so just a, a great quarter for us, um, you know, rebound quarter, something that I expect to be, um, sort of the norm for going forward. And so we're pretty happy with with how things are sort of shaped out over the course of the last uh, you know couple of quarters. Absolutely. So, I mean, you mentioned how, you know, within this quarter, that kind of was a reflection of some operational efficiencies coming online, right? So that's part of the reason that you're seeing a little gross margin, all that. But you said revenues were up. And if they were, what would you say are some of the reasons for why you're starting to see some of the growth uh, that you saw this last quarter? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think part of it has to do with leadership changes. I mean, at the end of the day, like we're in a people business and, and you know, uh, it's the same as any other business. If you have the right people in the, in the right spots, you know, right positions, you know, you go back to good to great. I mean, it's, it's very true, right? I mean, good things happen. And uh, and that's what we have. We've got some some great people running the organizations, uh, the agencies that we own. And we, we'd made some, you know, I'd say alterations in, in, in some of the agencies and those have panned out. Um, and so what we saw was an increase in revenue. Um, you know, we're in a private pay industry. Obviously, we're not in the Medicare or Medicaid space. And so we have price and power. So in the inflationary environment, we've been operating in for the last, you know, seems like year plus. I mean, we, we've been able to, um, you know, adjust our, our billing rates accordingly while paying our caregivers more. Um, so the gross margins continue to improve. Um, but, but the biggest thing really just had to be, you know, we, we really took a deep dive into all the operations in the U S saw there, there was a number of areas where we can make improvements and that's what we did. Um, you know, I, would like to say that anytime we identify an improvement, it'll, you know, we can see an immediate impact, but, and, and I know investors like to see that, but, uh, you know, it, it, it took, took two or three quarters for everything to sort of pan out, but, but it did, I mean, you know, all the stuff I said that would happen has, has really happened. And uh, so now we just sort of built from here. Absolutely. And just to be clear on my last statement with, you know, setting you up for that question, uh, as it states in the press release that you guys put out for Q2, Q2 2023 revenues uh, were increased uh, relative to Q1 2023, but were lower right. than Q2 2022. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. Um, but in looking at this as well, you know, and, and you kind of basically hit on that because it's pretty interesting that you said it was all leadership changes. Like what aspect of the leadership changes really resulted in the adjust, adjusted EBITDA though, higher than Q2 2022? Cause I mean, it's up, what, what does it say here? 11.4 X compared to, uh, Q2 2022 looking at compared to Q2 2023. Oh, I, th I think if you look at the improvements it's been across the board. So uh, one at the head office and, and operational management level. And I think people sometimes get confused when they look at our financials and they see head office operations management. I think they think that's only head office. That's not the case. It's actually like the salaries and positions are represented at head office plus all the salaries and, and so on within the offices in, in the U.S. Um, and, and so, you know, there are some positions that we felt maybe 
um, you know, were some duplication. And so we eliminated a couple of those positions. Um, you know, we, we made some, I, I would say we, we took advantage of, you know, really great leaders that we had across the organization and we gave them additional responsibilities. Um, so what you saw was a reduction, uh, one, in head office costs at the operational uh, level as well within the U.S. in particular, and leadership changes I, I mentioned, and a little bit more focus on some of the sales. We, we'd, uh, um, you know, made some inroads with some sales staff, and, and, and again, just sort of the combination of things has led to an improvement. You know, in the past, it's been probably a while since I've spoken about this, but I, I used to talk a lot about incremental improvements. Right, because you make a little bit of change here, a little bit of change there, and eventually that all adds up to a much greater impact. And and really, that's what we saw. Um, you know, a tweak here, a tweak there, and and you think, well, it's not big by itself, but when you when they're all added together, it ma it makes a big impact. And again, the result, of course, is uh, record uh, adjusted EBITDA in the U.S. and and of course, that's our biggest operating segment. So we had record adjusted EBITDA on a consolidated basis. So. Uh, things really, really, you know, turned out pretty well for us in Q2. And, and now it's just about demonstrating that again, Q3. Absolutely. So, you know, what's fun about always interviewing you is, uh, you know, you have the same map behind you in every single <laughs> interview. And I know th from talking to you, I know that, you know, each, each um, uh, uh, thumbtack is a new um, uh, uh, area that Nova Leap is in or new facility, right? New, new area of operations, you know, so you can kind of see, you can almost kind of map the company's progress. You just have to watch each interview and see like how many more thumbtacks are added uh, each, every single time. So, you know, I, I say all that to set up, you know, my next question here is, you know, from what you can tell us now moving forward, you know, what's the progress on adding thumbtacks to, uh, to under the company's name and, and adding more areas and regions, stuff like that. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, you know, from our history, we were we were quite acquisitive. Um, matter of fact, the last three deals we had done was over a two week period in December of twenty one. But we haven't done one since. Um, but what we have done is again make the operational improvements, which is key to delivering the record results we just had. Two is we paid down debt. So from an allocation of capital perspective, we paid down an awful lot of debt over the course of the last few years to the point that you know we should have just short of three hundred thousand dollars of bank debt at the end of this year. So you know, really, really good, uh, you know, sound financial position. So, you know, from my perspective, I look at that and say, well, if we've increased our debt capacity and, and we have deals that, you know, sort of come our way, then we're in a good a good situation to, to pick away at some opportunities. So um, I certainly plan on on being back on the acquisition front. Uh, um, you know, when that happens, obviously, we, we, we would make an announcement, you know, if we did that. But um, I think the most important thing for us the last couple of years was just really coming out of covid uh, putting ourselves in a good financial position so that as we think about the next level of growth, we're we're well positioned. I, I mean, remember our, our we go back our revenue in 2016 was forty thousand dollars US, right? We finished last year with 28 million. You know, we did a lot over a short period of time. Um, I know you know investors look at that and say, well, it's kind of boring right now. Not a lot has happened, but what has happened is I think we've set ourselves up for the next leg of growth, and that's really where we're focused. Hey, look, man, you said, I think in, I think it was an interview in 2022 about how you have this hundred million revenue goal. I'm going to hold you to it, man. You know, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure you listen, I'm sure you're holding yourself to it, but you know, just, if you're going to talk about it with me, I'm going to hold you to it too. Um, so Chris, there's no, there's no one harder on me than me. Trust me. <laughs> I'm sure. So, all right, man. Well, I think, I think we're pretty much there. You know, like I said, you're going to be in Vancouver, I encourage everyone to come and yeah. uh, join us. You can see Chris's presentation there. So Chris, uh, for more information uh, prior to Vancouver, for folks to find uh, everything they need on Nova Leap, where can they go? What, what's the website? NovaLeapHealth.com is our website. has all the press releases on there. has our investor deck, but uh, hopefully you'll get the chance to see some people out, out in Vancouver. Very good. All right, Chris, thank you so much for joining me. Really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And I'll see you in Vancouver. All right. Thanks. Take care. Thank you.